Hello everyone and welcome to game 5 of the 2018 World Chess Championship between Magnus Carlsen and Fabiano Caruana. This is game 5. Uh, all of the previous 4 games have been drawn. If you haven't seen them, I will put a link to them in the description below. Uh, you're more than welcome to check it out as it is a very intense championship. Uh, now in this game, uh, Caruana uh, once again has the white pieces and uh, uh, like in the uh, previous 2 rounds where Caruana had the white pieces, uh, e4 was played and then Carlsen defended uh, with a Sicilian that, uh, well, at some point became a Rosalimo Nejmedino variation. Uh, it will also be very interesting what happens in this game, uh, but before that uh, I would like to share with you uh, a short poll uh, I created on Twitter. Uh, it's uh, be, it's uh, lasted for only 4 hours before I took this screenshot. Uh, I asked a question uh, that, uh, well, not about the prediction of the championship, but about uh, who your pick is and... Uh, uh, is your choice good for chess altogether? Like, uh, how would uh, chess benefit the most if Carlsen wins or if Caruana wins? Uh, so far, 76% of you think that uh, it's uh, Carlsen will win and that that is good for chess. Uh, but that is only uh, from 732 votes and there was 20 hours left uh, in the poll. Uh, so I will also share it tomorrow. Uh, after game six and we'll see if uh, the outcome changes uh, also i would like to share a couple of very nice photos uh, also compliments by nikki riga uh, there you have it uh, caruana arrives at the scene carlson uh, unlike caruana yesterday uh, did not uh, continue just sitting down but he tried to get up obviously the handshake happened too fast but it does look a bit more uh, appealing than the diagonal sh handshake we faced yesterday uh, also, uh, here we have a very nice photo of uh, a new gentleman at the scene making the first move for Fabiano. Uh, also, we can use it as a photo challenge. Uh, so, who is the gentleman making the first move for Fabiano? Uh, I will give it, uh, you a little hint. You're using his product uh, almost every day. You just don't know it. Uh, and for the third, uh, here we have uh, a nice photo of... Uh, Carlsen and Caruana, uh, the first couple of moves are on the board, and uh, like I said, uh, as the photographers are allowed to take photos, they will usually just uh, play out the opening and then uh, just chill until everyone leaves. So, that being said, uh, let's check out game 5. Uh, Caruana has the white pieces, and again, he opens with e4. Uh, once again, Carlsen opens with c5, and uh, I have something to share with you about the entire championship, but hopefully I will remember that for the end of this video. Uh, Sicilian game, uh, Sicilian defense is on the board, knight to f3, knight to c6, and here we have bishop to b5. Uh, again, going into the Nizhmedino attack, or the Rosolimo attack here, uh, it's basically the Rosolimo, but Nezmetinov has been using it uh, <laughs> so much and he created such beautiful games with it uh, that now it also bears his name. And, uh, you know, I definitely approve of the opening choice. Uh, otherwise, how would I be able to say Nezmetinov so, so many times during a, a World Chess Championship match? Uh, we have g6, castles, bishop to g7, and now comes rook to e1. Here already on move 5, uh, Caruana goes into a different line. He doesn't capture the knight on six, c6 like in the previous games, uh, but rather first he goes rook to e1. Uh, Carlsen goes e5 nonetheless, and now comes a move that uh, uh, you're probably going to think I'm teasing you before, but it is uh, the move that was actually played in the game. It is not the first time this game was uh, this move uh, has been played. It's been played plenty of times. Uh, one of the uh, one of the more notable games is uh, Etienne Bakro versus uh, Alexander Grishuk, uh, where the game continued with C capture some D4, and uh, Grishuk was able to win that game very nicely against Bakro. Uh, seemingly A3 leads to a uh, to a kind of a wing gambit type structure, and then uh, Grishuk uh, continued with B3, I believe. Uh, but uh, in the end, he won a very nice game. But it was a, a rapid game from 2017 from the Grand Chess Tour in Paris. Uh, here, uh, after this B4, Carlsen took some 5 minutes. So it's not like uh, it comes as a super surprise for him, this B4 move. Uh, but still taking 5 minutes, uh, the first time in the game where uh, someone actually thinks about the move. Uh, also, I've seen some comments uh, where people said that uh, Carlsen was actually just pretending uh, and wasting, and uh, he wasted time. So perhaps Corona would th think uh, that Carlsen is out of preparation, but... I don't, I don't think uh, you would actually waste time for nothing in a World Chess Championship match. Uh, but then again, who knows? Knight captures on b4 was played, and here we have bishop to b2 played uh, pretty much instantly by Caruana. 
Uh, also, uh, you know, we should uh, consider are some uh, Evans gambit ideas possible here, like c3 and d4. Uh, but it doesn't it doesn't appear to be so. After knight to c6 and d4, uh, let's say pawn captures, pawn captures, uh, pawn captures here, and now you can no longer capture, for example, on c6 because after d captures, the queen would also be guarding the d4 pawn. So here after knight bd2, you don't want to allow something like d3 to so this bishop can attack your rook. Uh, a6 now, uh, bishop captures, d captures, and now after bishop to a3, preventing castle, but not for long, knight e7, and black will be fine. <clears throat> uh, black, will, black will be just better. So such ideas are not possible here, c3, d4. So instead, we have bishop to b2, like we said, played instantly, and now again, Carlsen takes a couple of minutes here, and he finds this uh, a6 move. And again, uh, a lot of people were considering, okay, but what, what does white do here? If you just move the bishop, let's say bishop e2, then black can even go simply back knight to c6. Uh, he keeps defending his e5 pawn, and he's just up a pawn. There's uh, there's really no compensation for white's uh, uh, wasted b2, <laughs> b2 pawn with that b4 move. Yes, okay, the bishop is very nicely developed, but if you're not going to get anything for the pawn sacrifice now, you're definitely not going to get anything for it later. Uh, but Caruana here played a3, also a move he prepared, and now uh, it's uh, it's a bit of a different uh, different idea. Uh, here we have a captures on b5. Again, Carlsen spent some five minutes on this move, and we have a captures on b4. So a couple of exchanges here, we have captures, captures, and now comes d6. Uh, also... Uh, a move where a, a lot of other moves uh, <laughs> can be can be played, but uh, Carlsen actually played it uh, fairly quickly. Uh, so C, uh, we have B captures on C5, and now comes Knight to E7. Uh, if you play D captures on C5, uh, then your E pawn becomes weak. Uh, white can simply capture it, and after Bishop captures, Knight captures. Uh, the material is now equal. Both players have six pawns, but Black has a slightly worse uh, pawn structure, so White White would definitely be better here. Uh, so instead, Carlsen goes for knight to e7, and now comes uh, queen to e2. Uh, a very interesting move by Caruana. Uh, again, he didn't spend all that much time on it. Uh, after pawn captures on d6, uh, also this uh, could have been played. Uh, queen captures on d6, uh, and now d4. Also something Caruana said in the press conference after the game. Uh, he had considered this line, but then... Uh, there's uh, nothing much here after a couple of exchanges here. Captures, 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 captures. The b5 pawn is under attack. Black can even push b4, control a3, control uh, c3. Uh, the square this knight can use to enter the game. Uh, and after something like knight to d2, black can simply castle. And white will not be able to use uh, the a file and go uh, make a very nice rook lift via rook a8. Uh, because rook d8 will be a very nice move for black. Knight comes to b3. And now white also has to take care of some future back rank weaknesses, so he will definitely have to waste a move at some point with g3 or h3. Uh, but all in all, black will be perfectly fine here. Uh, so instead, not capturing on d6, Corona goes queen e2, and now comes b4. Uh, basically the only move that was good for black in this position. Uh, if you played anything other than b4, uh, if, you, if you tried something like capturing or castling uh, as queen captures on b5 is a threat. Uh, by playing uh, this, you, and there's no real good way to actually defend it. You can't defend it with the bishop because then the queen is no longer defending the d6 pawn. Uh, so you kind of have to do it. Uh, b4 was played and now comes queen to c4. And uh, queen b5 here doesn't really do all that much. If queen b5 check, you're not going to even pick up the pawn as knight to c6 would guard the pawn. And now captures, captures. Uh, black is black is perfectly fine here. d3, black will even castle and nothing to worry about. Uh, so after b4, uh, we have queen to c4 by Caruana and now comes queen to a5. So some seven minutes were spent here. Uh, and it's actually a very nice move that uh, uh, forces matters as uh, the bishop is under attack on a1, the bishop is unguarded, and the pawn on b4 uh, very conveniently prevents the knight uh, on b2. Sorry about that, so for some reason it uh, refuses to become red. <laughs> uh, the knight on b1 cannot enter the game. Uh, and uh, in the press conference, Karana even uh, said that he was actually considering d4 here, but, uh, you know, he thought that it was a ridiculous idea. Uh, but he said that he did consider it as, uh, you know, it was uh, a lot of fun calculating it. Uh, and he was uh, very much uh, up on time, so the, no harm. 
but it's actually not such a ridiculous idea. Uh, if Carlsen actually accepts, which uh, you know he doesn't have to do it immediately, then you can play uh, captures on d6. The knight has to move. After the knight moves, you can play d5. Uh, after the knight moves again, now you can play queen captures on b4. Uh, and here, whatever black does, black can castle. But you would have a, a fairly dangerous pawn structure here. This uh, pawn here, this pawn here. Uh, yeah, the inf interface is giving me some problems here, and uh, the the double the d pawn, uh, the blacks uh, the black uh, bishop is currently not uh, doing all that much here, and the white would actually be better here. But uh, the problem is with uh, Corona's d4 that Carlson doesn't have to capture the bishop immediately. First, he can get rid of at least some of the pawns here. D captures on c5. You're threatening to capture on d4. Also, the bishop is still uh, loose on a1. So now after d5. Uh, and queen captures on a1, now it's a bit different. Queen captures on c5, now you get the bishop to g4. Uh, a nice developing move. And now white will be able to grab a couple of pawns here. For example, queen b5 check, bishop goes back, attacks queen. Queen captures on b7, and now the king isn't allowed to castle because white will simply grab back the piece. Uh, but after knight c8, queen captures on b4, again not allowing black to castle. Uh, it would be... Uh, well, black would still be up his uh, piece, but uh, whether whether he could castle safely and uh, you know activate uh, his game, it would be it w it's not all that clear. So definitely not uh, something ridiculous to think about. I'm sure if this was a blitz game after Carlson's a5, uh, Corona would most definitely push d4, and we would have uh, a very creative game. Uh, but it is the World Chess Championship game, uh, and you know uh, it's uh, very unlikely that we will see such moves. Uh, C captures on d6 was played by Caruana, now forcing uh, the knight on e7 to move. Uh, and here we have bishop to e6 first, and in between move, attacking Caruana's queen. Uh, and now we have queen to c7. Uh, definitely the strongest move. Now, of course, there's no uh, <laughs> consideration of capturing on a1 because you would be checkmated here. Queen captures on e7 is a threat of checkmate. Uh, so Carlsen uh, trades queens here. We have queen captures, pawn captures uh, on c7, and now knight to c6. Uh, the b4 pawn is now defended. The black uh, king will be able to enter the game and capture this pawn. And after the king moves from the back rank, uh, even the rook will be able to enter the game. Uh, so c3. You do have to deal with this b4 pawn somehow, as uh, the, knight, uh, the knight still can't enter the game. And uh, uh, there's... Uh, it's hard to find a better way to do it. So c3, uh, king to d7. Uh, Carlsen uses this precious time to get his king into the game. Uh, we have c captures on b4, uh, giving up this pawn. But, uh, you know, you have other things to do. Uh, rook to a8, attacking the bishop on a1. And now, as uh, the bishop on a1 is under attack, and also the b4 pawn is under attack, Caruana spends actually 32 minutes uh, considering what to play here. Uh, he plays bishop to c3, which gets the bishop out of harm's way and also protects the b4 pawn. Seems like uh, and uh, seems like a really weird position where we want to waste uh, more than half an hour, as bishop to c3 does seem to solve all of your problems. Uh, but there were things to consider. Like you're gonna use this, you're gonna lose the c7 pawn uh, any time now. So maybe a move like pawn to c8, promoting to a queen uh, that uh, would push the black king back or even make the rook go back. Uh, could be a valuable tempo sometimes in the future. So also a thing to consider. Uh, also a thing to consider would be perhaps b5. And now after something like rook captures on a1, b captures on c6 with check. Uh, pawn captures and now knight to c3. Uh, offering a, a rook trade. Rook captures, knight captures and now bishop to h6. Uh, threatening bishop to d2 with an attack on both knights. So first knight to f3. King captures on c7, and only now knight captures on e5. Now it doesn't come with check, but now bishop captures on d2. And uh, black uh, would actually have a very nice position here with the bishop pair and the passed c pawn. Uh, so uh, uh, definitely a thing to consider. Uh, so, uh, like I said, bishop to c3 was played, but there were even uh, ideas like knight to c3, maybe giving up the b4 pawn first. Uh, so after knight captures on b4, you can go uh, rook to b1. Uh, knight moves. Now, of course, you cannot capture on b7 with the rook because uh, the rook is still attacking your bishop on a1. Uh, but after a move like knight to g5, which is also something Caruana surely considered, uh, king captures on c7, knight captures on e6. You double up uh, black spawns uh, on the e file and now f3. Again, definitely a playable position for white. Uh, surely something Caruana considered. 
uh, but he decided for bishop to c3 and it did take him some uh, like i said 32 minutes to to decide upon it uh, and this is only move 19 so still more than 20 moves to reach time control uh we have king captures on c7 and now d3 uh also a move corona spent some time on as a lot of players were actually uh, considering knight to g5 here, saying like it's a very nice smooth threatening to capture and double white's pawns here, and also the threat of uh, capturing on h7 is there. Uh, but then rook to a4 with a double attack on the b4 pawn. And now, uh, okay, you can capture on h7, then black is just going to capture on b4, nothing happens there. Uh, but after knight captures on e6 uh, with check, pawn captures, and uh, here you can play rook uh, to e3. Uh, a very nice idea that uh, goes about uh, uh, playing rook to f3 and rook to f7. And now after knight captures on b4, uh, also uh, you might consider something like bishop to f8 uh, to increase the pressure here, which does seem to be better. Uh, because if instead uh, after rook to e3 you go knight captures on b4 immediately, uh, then rook to f3 uh, with, comes with the threat of rook to f7. So maybe first improving with bishop to f8. And only then uh, white uh, gets to decide what to do. But the b5 is actually very nice here. Now, after knight to d4, black's position is excellent. You're going to get the b5 pawn uh, any time now. Uh, black, uh, white will have very difficult time getting rid of this knight from d4. If uh, at some point the knight is captured, then black will fix his pawn structure. Uh, and also, the rook is covering the a3 square, the bishop is stuck on c3 and the pawn on d2. The knight still has no way of actually entering the game. Uh, so while a lot of people were suggesting knight to g5, uh, Karana seems, uh, 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 finds that it is best to play d3 and find a way for this knight to enter the game. Uh, and here, uh, a lot of people again said that b5 is the strongest idea for Carlsen. Uh, some of the things that uh, the, <laughs> the official commentators uh, from any website uh, don't enjoy that is that uh, everyone just walks around with a with a smartphone. Um, uh, when I was uh, in London for the for the for game one and two, it was uh, uh, you know there were people who were just enjoying the games, were watching the moves, you know, enjoying the magic. But a lot of people were uh, actually watching Sesse's the, the Norwegian supercomputer's evaluation at all times. So it kind of <clears throat> kind of spoiled the fun. Uh, but okay, here a lot of people were saying b5 is the absolute best uh, as it fixes the pawn on b4 and after the pawn on b4 is fixed only then will you be able to attack it. Rook a4, bishop to f8, uh, go after this weakness. Uh, but Carlsen actually spends 22 minutes and he decides for king to b6. Uh, and uh, well, I haven't found anything wrong with bishop to uh, pawn to b5 but surely Carlsen uh, figured that there, uh, that there was no point in going after this. Uh, because now, after something like rook to c1, uh, trying to create some attacks as the king also uh, occupies the c file, uh, king b7 and now bishop to d2 uh, would be would be a very nice move. If rook to a4, going after the b4 pawn, uh, now white can go knight g5, and after h5, not allowing white to capture the pawn, now pawn, knight captures. We have pawn captures. And uh, it seems like a, like a very playable position for black. The bishop will still be able to attack uh, the b4 pawn via bishop to f8. At some point, black will win the pawn. So it's, it's very interesting to see uh, why, uh, why Carlsen decided it, it was best not to play it. Uh, but okay, uh, Carlsen decided after d3 to go king to b6. And here, uh, very, very, very likely comes a move that uh, most likely Carlsen missed. Uh, if uh, there wasn't this move Caruana uh, played, uh, perhaps king to b6 was in fact the better move than, than pawn to b5. Here, bishop to d2 was played. Now, uh, <laughs> offering uh, the b4 pawn and preparing b5, uh, but also with this bishop to d2 move, bishop to e3 is coming, and also the bishop frees the c3 square for the knight. Uh, and here, again, uh, Carlsen spends some 11 minutes uh, for rook to d8. But it's very interesting, if you play bishop to f8 to prepare an attack against the b4 pawn, uh, then white can actually push b5, like we've mentioned. Uh, and after king captures, now you get knight to c3 check. Uh, king back to b6, and now knight to d5 check, taking away the c7 square uh, from black kings. Black's king, uh, bishop captures, pawn captures, and now knight to b4. Uh, rook to b1 attacking the knight. Uh, it seems that the, <laughs> there's a very little you can do to protect the knight. 
Uh, you can go rook to a4, but even better is king to c7. Because now, uh, after white captures the knight and black recaptures, there's no way for you to actually capture the bishop because of rook to a1. And after you give up the rook and the knight, uh, black will checkmate the white king. Uh, so instead, uh, after this bishop captures on b4, you will have to play knight captures on e5. And then comes f5, simply not allowing white to capture it. Uh, rook to c1, and now you can even uh, play king to d6, attack the knight. Knight to c4, check, king moves. Uh, and now after g3, as you have to create some breeding room for, for the white king uh, to avoid uh, further back rank weaknesses. Uh, b5, knight moves, and now rook b8, putting a rook behind a passed pawn. Uh, and now after the bishop moves, uh, uh, black will also start pushing his pass pawn and will have a very nice game. Uh, all in all, uh, uh, an equalish game. Uh, so after bishop to d2, the move Carlson perhaps missed, uh, rook to d8 here uh, after 11 minutes, as we've mentioned. Uh, and here bishop to e3 check. Uh, also uh, a way to defend the d3 pawn was rook to d1. Now, of course, you cannot capture because of bishop to e3 opens up a discovered attack here. You would have to give it up. Uh, but still, after knight captures on b4, you know, doesn't seem like uh, <laughs> white would uh, have uh, that much uh, of an easy task converting this with with black's bishop pair. Uh, but still, no point in, uh, you know, risking anything. So, uh, bishop to e3 check, king moves to b5, and knight to c3 check. Uh, we have king captures uh, on b4, and now comes knight to d5 check. Uh, bishop captures, pawn captures, and now comes rook captures on d5. So here... Carlsen is uh, again up a pawn, uh, but uh, only only briefly. Rook to b1, check. Uh, king to c3, and now rook captures on b7. It was uh, crucial to get rid of this b7 pawn. Uh, and here, knight to d8. Uh, you might think that e4 is a, a really powerful move here, as, of course, you cannot capture it due to rook to d1. This would result in checkmate. Uh, but one thing that... Uh, white can do is actually simply ignore you and capture on f7 uh, and now after you capture on f3 rook captures on g7 king captures on d3 and now pawn captures <coughs> uh, on f3 as well uh, knight e5 uh, now rook captures on h7 knight captures on f3 with check king g2 king e4 uh, rook e7 check rook e5 blocks rook captures on e5 and after knight captures on e5 uh, you would have this position where white is actually up a pawn. Uh, unlikely that uh, this this uh, would be winning, but still, uh, you don't want to allow this. Uh, so, uh, knight to d8, attacking the rook and also defending the f7 pawn. Uh, we have rook to c7 check. You do have to move the rook, so why not do it with tempo? The king has to move now. You can't approach any further because the bishop is guarding d4 and d2. So, simply king captures on d3. Again, Carlsen is up a pawn. Uh, but uh, it will be very hard to, to do anything with this extra pawn. Uh, king to f1. Uh, Fabiano wants to bring his king into the game. Uh, we have h5. Now the, uh, the f pawn, the f pawn uh, and the bishop will be able to move as the h7 pawn will no longer be a target. Uh, we have h3. Uh, and uh, now comes king to e4. Uh, trying to go deeper into the position. Knight to g5 check. And now even king to f5. Uh, we have knight captures on f7, knight captures on f7, rook captures on uh, f7, and bishop to f6. Uh, and here, uh, Caruana simply played g4. This comes with check. Uh, and it was in this position on move 34 that the players agreed to a draw. Uh, why did they agree to a draw? Well, uh, after h captures, h captures. King will simply attack the rook. And after the rook moves, uh, now you get rook to d6. And uh, it's... Uh, an equal position, both players have a, a rook, a bishop, and two pawns, uh, nothing much to be done here, so, you know, all in all, uh, a, a fair game and uh, and a very fighting draw. Uh, once again, uh, for the third game, Caruana played e4, Carlsen defended with the Sicilian, we had the Rosolimo, the Nejmedino Rosolimo attack, uh, and once again, Caruana managed to surprise Carlsen a little bit, uh, but then, uh, again, Car uh, Carlsen got the upper hand after, after being surprised. So it it's, uh, seems very nice that um, Corona up, outplays Carlsen in the opening. Carlsen spends uh, a, a whole lot of time, but then, uh, you know, com comes back on top. And it's very interesting, uh, <laughs> uh, the quote above the board. Uh, Carlsen says, my favorite player from the past is myself from some three to four years ago. If you've happened to catch 
uh, the press conference after the game, uh, they asked uh, both uh, Carlson and Caruana who was their favorite player from the past. Uh, Caruana says that in terms of you know uh, how much uh, won or, uh, or how much uh, how excellent chess he played, uh, definitely Bobby Fischer. But Carlson said that it was actually himself uh, some three to four years ago. Uh, so there we have it. And like I said, I wanted to mention something about the entire match. Uh, as this is the fifth game that was already drawn. Uh, it's nothing uh, out of the ordinary. Out of the ordinary, a lot of games will be drawn in a World Chess Championship match because the stakes are simply too high, uh, and uh, there's simply no, you know, room to play uh, an interesting line to play uh, something that is not absolutely proven by, uh, or you know, engine proof. Uh, everyone has to come, you know, prepared with engine lines. Uh, but you know, don't look uh, on this uh, entire World Chess Championship uh, event uh, as you know uh, in. Uh, uh, by by looking at the games, you have to look at uh, look at the entire event as a whole, and uh, you know consider this like uh, the players uh, simply trying to find cracks, uh, you know, in each other's armor. Uh, who knows? Maybe maybe tomorrow in game six, uh, Carlson will you know have enough. Maybe he will play e4. Uh, maybe we will see a Petrov for the first time, as that's uh, pretty much what everyone's been talking about for the past year. Will we see a Petrov between Carlson and Caruana? Uh, and also interesting, as Crossan did pick the black pieces uh, for game number one, now uh, he finishes uh, the first half of the match uh, with the white pieces, and also he will start the second half of the match with the white pieces. So now Crossan has uh, white pieces uh, two games in a row, and here it will be very interesting. If he doesn't do anything here, uh, then uh, he is of course left with uh, uh, two blacks, uh, two whites, and, and three blacks, and it will be uh, on Caruana to do something. So yeah, uh, it's very interesting, and uh, I, I still think uh, the match, even though we're only getting, uh, uh, only we've only arrived up to game six, uh, that it's uh, like a uh, like a ticking bomb, and I'm very interested if you agree with this because everyone knows Carlson is the best player in the world uh, when it comes to to quicker time controls. Uh, he will not always win against everyone, but if you fa if you confront him with everyone and uh, everyone has to play like. Uh, a lot of games against him. I, I believe he will prevail against everyone. So Caruana most likely knows this, that if he continues drawing every game, drawing every game, drawing every game, after tw 12 games of classical time format, we will have uh, four rapid games and then we go into blitz. So I'm sure Caruana also knows, unless he was secretly practicing how to play uh, faster time controls this entire time, uh, that Carlsen, uh, with every draw, it's actually Carlsen who is closer and closer to keeping his title as world champion. And also, I don't know if you had a chance to uh, uh, catch uh, an interview with Hikaru Nakamura, uh, where he mentioned that it would be very weird if Caruana wins this uh, World Chess Championship match, uh, because then we would have a, a world champion who is... Uh, who, who, who is bad at uh, faster time controls, which is not something you would expect expect out of uh, the world champion. So I'm also very interested in what you think about uh, Nakamura's uh, saying in his interview. And uh, yeah, that's basically it for game five. Uh, you know, I, you should consider this entire uh, event like uh, like the movie Matrix. Like if you just uh, you know investigate uh, part one, two, and three individually, then you will say, okay, part one is excellent, and then two and three are just like you know ah. Uh, but if you consider the trilogy as a whole, then okay, it's a very nice story. It's a very nice idea. I mean, why not? And that's how you should uh, basically uh, uh, you know uh, consider the World Chess Championship event. Uh, but yeah, uh, I do hope uh, you enjoyed this game, and uh, hopefully, I mean, tomorrow we will see uh, a very nice game, maybe even a Petrov, like we've mentioned. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Danny McCullough, uh, Vinaj uh, Nurmakutl uh, Krishnan, uh, Nikola Vulic, uh, Edward Fagan, and uh, Joseph Weinstein for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check all my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Uh, maybe with uh, a nice in-between game before Game 6, but if not, uh, definitely with Game 6 of the 2018 World Chess Championship match. Thank you all, and I will see you soon.